Hello, I thought that it's time to create some electronics and learn a little bit maybe because I, ha I have some project to be done. I want to make some light that will turn on when it's dark. Uh, at this time, we are not going to make it physically. We will use Tinkercad just to design it and to see how can it be done in real life so that you don't break anything or you don't buy unnecessary things. So I don't know if, you, if you've ever used Tinkercad, but if you haven't tried, it's really good. It's not the best, of course, but it's really good when you start off with it. So let's get into it. Maybe first of all, we can uh, draw the schematics that we are going to make. What do we need? We need some uh, power supply. So let's draw it in here. This is going to be our battery. I don't know. So what voltage it should be? I think that it might do about three volts and more. Probably three volts to nine volts should be fine. And what's next? We need LED so we can draw it there. And of course, when it comes with LED, we always need a resistor. And of course, if you supply your circuit with three volts, then the value of the resistor will be smaller. But if you use some higher voltage, then you would need some higher resistance as well. But I think that if you add about 230, that should be fine. 230 ohms, okay? So from there we want to go to the positive and then we want to add NPN transistor. So let's draw it and it goes like that and then and from LED it goes to the collector. So we will put C in there. Here it's our base and here is emitter. So from the emitter, we want to go to the negative. So of course, here is a plus, here is a minus. And what's next? We need something to trigger our transistor so that our circuit goes through. Because as you can see, we've got our circuit done. Because this is our semiconductor. And in order to pass electrons, it needs some trigger on the base and the trigger will be our photoresistor actually. So we need a photoresistor or light dependent resistor which increase the value of the resistance and decrease it based on the light's value. So let's add it there. And now we need to connect it with the base. But not only, we need to make a voltage divider along with some other resistor. So let's add a resistor and in a second we'll tell what value it should have and the other end will go to the positive of our power supply. And this is pretty much it. That should be working but of course maybe I will just type LDR, light dependent resistor and this is NPN. Okay. This is LED and this is resistor and this is resistor as well. So what value should have? It depends. If you want your LED to be on when it's totally dark, then you should go for very high value. Like for example, 100K. But if you want your LED to go on when it's evening, when it's not that dark, then you should go for something smaller like 20k for example. So let's switch over to Tinkercad and see if it's going to work. Okay, here we are in our Tinkercad. If you haven't used it before, you need to join. So we just join now and you can sign in or you can um, create your personal account with Google for example. So sign in with Google. And you can choose one of your accounts. I will choose Phoebisoft. 
and here we are. You can see that there are many options on the left. We don't want to design 3D, we want to do circuits. So now just create a new circuit and there are two ways we can build it. We can build it on the breadboard or we can build it just like that. And I think it would be easier for now to build it like that so that it will be a little bit similar to the schematic we just draw. And then we will do with the breadboard. So let's get into it. And first of all, maybe I will use this power supply. So I will get it there. And maybe I will change it to about 6 volts. So I will use 4 batteries. And now we need to connect our resistor. So let's get a resistor and we need LED. Let's put it there and let's connect it. I will use the red wire. So let's go with red. I will connect it like so. And we want to go from there to the transistor. So we need to grab it and move it to the area. And from our LED, we want to go to the collector. So let's go to the left and go down and do something like that. So it looks maybe not great, but not that bad. And from emitter, we want to go to negative. So let's go there and straight down. Let's change to black. We need to add our LDR photoresistor. So let's grab it, put it there, for example. And we need another resistor. We will rotate it by pressing R on the keyboard. And now maybe I will move it to the right a little bit, like so. Because now from one terminal of our photoresistor, we want to go to the base. So let's connect it. Maybe I will change the color to orange. And now we want to go from the other terminal to the minus so i will go straight down and to the right and i will change it to black from this terminal we want to go straight to the resistor so let's put it there put it down a little bit and i will change the color for let's say yellow and from there we want to go to the positive of our power supply so i will go there and i will change it to red we need to change the values of the resistors so let's click on this one and I type 230 so let's change to ohms not kilo ohms just ohms and put 230 but with this one we need to let's add 100 k's and we'll see how it works as you can see when we change the value the color of the strips is changing and because you can read the value of the resistance based on these stripes but we're not going to learn it. I don't know them, to be honest, and I don't need to know them. Everybody seems to like teaching how to decode, you know, the value and the tolerance of the resistors based on these strips. But I think this is useless, to be honest. Um, when we are designing in the Tinkercad, we don't need it at all. And when you will do something like that at your home, it's just easy to take a multimeter and check the resistance of the resistor. Um, I think it's not worth to learn decoding them by the strips, but it's my personal opinion. You don't have to agree with me, of course. So now we changed it. So let's start simulation. And as you can see, the LED is on. If I click on it, you can see that there is dark, there is bright so if we go to the right you can see that the led is off i just moved only slightly to the right and it's off so it means that it will go on only then when it will be really dark so let's change it and let's say you want led to go on when it's not that dark when it's a little bit lighter so let's put 20 k's in here and start simulation. So now I will go to the right and as you can see, I can go right a little bit more. You can go even 
less to 10 Ks and let me see and now if we go to the right you can see that the LED is still on to about this point so as you can see this uh, this resistor is to manipulate when the LED should be on and off and that's it so I will go back to 100 Ks because this is something I aim for and this is pretty much done and now I will show you how to do it on the breadboard because I would encourage you to build everything on the breadboard because this is the best way to play with it and now I think I will change my power supply to 9 volts why not I move it to the left even more maybe I will slide it down put it there um, something like that or maybe I will rotate it and now let's connect wires to make supply like so change it to red and let's add negative and change it to black of course good now let's start off with LED and resistor so let's add it we need to rotate it with arm put it there change the value to about 230 now let's add LED I will add it here so it's connected straight away and we want to go from the positive to this resistor so let's just do something like that and maybe I'll change it to red so it's the same as it is in here and now we go from there and through the resistor then LED and from LED we want to go to the collector of the transistor so let's get the transistor put it uh, let's put it there why not so we want to go from there to the collector so let's go to there with the green that's correct and from the emitter we want to go to the negative so maybe I will let me think I will slide it down a little bit so these lines don't cross over and I will use this to connect to the negative now we want to go from the base to the photoresistor so let's add photoresistor let's say I will add it there and we want to go from the base to there with the yellow so let's change it to yellow now with orange this is orange sorry and now we need to add another resistor and rotate it like so I could just connect it like that but I want to make it a little bit similar as it is on this schematic so we move it to the right and I will connect it with the yellow wire so let's do like that and choose yellow good so now from this terminal we want to go to negative negative um, so let me do something like that and change to black and from this terminal of our resistor we want to go to positive so let's go from there to positive and change to red great maybe I will slide it down and it looks like it should be working we just need to change the value of this resistor to about 100 Ks and let's start simulation and as you can see our LEDs current is far too much it's about 23 milliamps which is too much it is because we increase the voltage of the battery so to make it right we need to change the resistance of this resistor to about 460 I would say and now it's looking fine let's check it just click on photo resistor and slide to the right and you can see that the light is off if we go back to the darkness the LED is back on I don't have my components ready to show you how I can assemble it you know in real life but that would be exactly the same as you can see it on this breadboard so I hope that you enjoyed the movie you learned something and you know how to make your own light in dark I hope you liked it 
If you did, please like the video. If you didn't, tell me why you didn't like it. What can I improve to make it better? And I will see you in the next one. Take care.